we've got a true freezer. Temperatures are getting warmer and warmer. Get in here and we look at it. And what did I find? Looks like the fan blade blocking my view. It's frozen up. So we're going to get this thing taken apart and see what's going on. that looks like it might be stuck there well before we touch anything let's go ahead and put a little mark on it there's a good chance that thing might be stuck there let's give it a few minutes and see if she turns let's see it hasn't defrosted in a little while all right so i waited and it didn't move so i went ahead and rotated it it did not click when I rotated it. It should have been going into it or was coming out of it. And obviously it was running. Went ahead and unplugged it there so that uh, I wasn't making any worse. Anyhow, made the next rotation and it went ahead and went into defrost. And we are pulling our amperage. This clock just seems a little backwards compared to what I'm normally used to. Normally one and two is my power coming in. This one here. Just, I don't know, it looks different. Whatever, I guess. The principles are the same. Generally what I'll do is I'll flip it on the back side and look and see how it uh, how it's set up. That way I know which one's my clock and which one's my commons, and which one's my feed circuit to my defrost and which one to my compressor. I'm most likely gonna need to get a new clock on here. And uh, we're gonna see if we can get this ice to melt away because it's a block of ice in there. Okay, so here's the back side of it. And the bottom ones still are my commons, if you want to think of it like that. They just picked corny numbers for whatever. So you can see the clock is tracking time, so I'm not exactly sure why it didn't do what it needed to do. Must be a gear in here that's ripped up. Okay, I remarked it again just because I can feel it moving on the back side. It seems to be tracking now. And we got defrost heaters running and the compressor shut off now that I got it plugged back in. So <clears throat> I'm wondering if my defrost termination is kicking it out. Possibly, prematurely. Looks like our tube heater, drain heater here seems to be working, but we got it looks like water backing up so we may have a plug drain line too i can feel the heat there yeah, it may be draining just so much of it that it couldn't get it out fast enough it really looks nice kind of curious to know what I end up finding when this is all said and done. And so a good portion of it here wasn't insulated. As we're tearing into it, I noticed a lot of oil down here. So there's a good chance we have a leak, so we're going to scan that real quick. You can see the water starting to drain a lot quicker over there. So I'm going to get the leak detector out see if we can find anything. Oil looks okay, at least in the compressor. I'm going to re-insulate this thing too. Something I did notice is the hand sanitizer with the alcohol will set this leak detector off in a heartbeat. So watch getting that around your hands. And it's been a little while. I uh, you know, I'm even near there. So that was about three minutes ago that I did that. I'm not picking up anything on this at all. Nothing down here at all, nothing on my filter dryer. Put a little tape on there to hold it together. I'll put some split on there, it's better than nothing. It's a lot better than what they had, it's not sure. 
This will probably not form real great, but you gotta do something. We'll add some tape to it to hold it in place. All right, so we got our gauges hooked up there. We get this insulated. Looks a lot better. And uh, we're basically just waiting for this thing to finish up. It's about done. It's even got the inside of the coil. So we're gonna see if this pressure's all right. I'm surprised it hasn't kicked out, honestly. Um, I set it for 40, 50 minutes. I don't know if it's quite been that long. So check and see what we got. There's a very fine, fine area of uh, ice up there yet. All right, so we're not pulling any amperage at all on our heaters. Obviously our compressor's not running. There's something interesting. Clock's 120 volts. Compressor's 212. Do we have a neutral on this thing? I haven't checked the plug yet. Yep, it's mold 8 voltage. So some of it's 120, some of it's 240. A little bit of both. Okay. You've got a neutral and two hots and a ground. It kicked out the defrost clock just a moment ago. Um, the limit's what pretty much shut it down. So defrost termination didn't kick out the clock, but the limit opened. So not too impressed on that. I have a feeling that limit might be acting up or the defrost termination might be acting up. Fans ain't coming on yet. That's a good sign. Okay. does have a CPR valve. Okay, there's one leg of power to the compressor. You see it's going up there to the white leg, going to the plug. That's why you definitely wouldn't want to plug a cheater cord in there. Get 120 volts is what you think, and it's 230. We're only calling 5.1. Don't know what this compressor's rated at. Okay, so they don't have the full rated load amps or anything on there, so we're gonna look this up. Let's see what it is. Okay, so it must have satisfied the switch. That's running. The amps are all on this thing. Right around six amp area. So we're not pulling very hard on it, that's for sure. We may go to four defrost per 24 hours instead of what we got. And I think I'm gonna change this clock because everything so far is showing pretty good. Everything screams that clock's bad and it's missing every now and again. So we're gonna change it. Refrigerant's fine, coils are de-iced, um, everything looks fine. The limits worked out till the end. The termination didn't seem right, so I may buy the, may recommend we change that in addition to the clock, but I mean, the termination could always be kicking it out. But I have seen where the gears act up in the middle. We're just gonna scan it and get another one in there. All right, <clears throat> so we went ahead and got the clock that matches that up so I didn't have to figure out all the weird wiring. We were still not getting a defrost uh, amperage, yet you've seen in the beginning of the video that we did. Well, come to find out, we have a limit switch that is going bad on it. So, went ahead and bypassed it for now. We're going to order a new one. I'm going to go ahead and go with a new clock just because this one here gives me more flexibility. So that's going to wrap this one up.
and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got a cooler here. They called in, it's over time. Basically, they said it's 60 degrees in here. Checking the defrost clock, it's not in defrost. Fans are running. Coil's pretty well packed full of crap, which that ain't helping it much. Man, that is bad. unit is not running. It's really hot. Looks like the thermostat's set okay. So we're gonna go outside and see what we can find out what's going on out there. Alright, so this uh, unit is really, really hot up on top. Fan's not running. First thing I'm gonna do is check my uh, pressure switches here and see if one of them are shutting it down because if it was just thermal overload, it would uh, still be running the fan. So, let's see what we got going on there. Looks like I just got another phone, another service call too I gotta go on. Um, today's uh, on call. Okay, so we have plenty of pressure up here, but we don't have pressure switch here closing. So when we jump it out, system runs. Fan ain't on yet, but the pressure switch may not have closed. Let's give that a moment. They just turned the pressure switch click. The fan didn't come on. Sure appeared like it's got power. Let me check it here real quick. I can hear it starting to overheat. Let's check voltage here real quick. Or we can follow it up. Yeah, you can hear the internal relief valve button loose. So I'm gonna go here. All right, so we was able to I was able to sweep this thing off, and like I've showed in the past, I use my sweeper and then this uh, pet brush here. This thing works out great. Basically, you can clean these coils right up and get them cleaned right up, no problem at all. So it's uh, compared to what it was, it's pretty doggone good. So and you can actually see light through it, and then it also cleans up the floor, anything that's down there on that. All right, so unfortunately I couldn't catch nothing on, on video. We got full sight glass. Check your pressure switches. We got the new motor in there, it's labeled. Got our grill back in there. If this wouldn't have had uh, such easy reach from somebody getting into it, I'd left that off. I blew this all out with nitrogen, and then I put a little piece of cardboard to keep it from rattling. This thing is, is beyond tired. It's went to sleep, it has Alzheimer's, and I mean it just, but it's still running. So, like I said, we got the inside cleaned up, fans running, fan blades just a touch, uh, got a little bit of a wobble there. Stuff's not new, and uh, you know, in my area, everybody wants to just fix things. Maybe you guys live in Beverly Hills where everybody just replaces everything, but that's not how it is around here. So, um, suction's getting cold, defrost clock is looking good. They put all the product that was really perishable uh, in the freezer, so it gained, uh, so it give, give off some of the heat. Now they're putting it back in the cooler, and uh, the thing's up and going. Uh, if I had my GoPro, I probably could have let it go, but I couldn't uh, stop every so often. So anyhow, you can see the light through there. Looks good. So that's good enough for now. We'll use this video for one of my other uh, fillers. So. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.